you couldn't have added a better guy, you know, bringing in back Bradbury and, you know, and A.J. Brown. And you add two Pro Bowl level players. And Hassan Reddick. This is a throwing league. You you got you added people at positions that are very very important to winning in the NFL now. They got a pass rusher in red. Yep. They got two corners. Those are key positions. Yep. If you're going to win. I think it's going to be a special season this year here. All right. I'm going to find out if my friend Gary Cobb thinks I'm insane. <laughs> I made a proclamation, Gary. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I think the Eagles are going to go to the Super Bowl. Woo! Wow. Oh, man. I tell you that's that's uh that's that's saying a lot, but you know they they really have made some good moves, man. I mean, uh to 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 do all that they've done. And the thing about it is, see when you add rookies, that's one thing. You know, it's adding a rookie because whatever a rookie's done in college, you really don't know what they're going to do in the pros. But when you add, you know, Pro Bowl players, come on, man. You you know a guy can play. And you add them at positions that the Eagles have added. I, I mean, I got to give them credit. I um saw, you know, uh, the, um, uh, you know, Mr. Laurie, um the owner of the team, and I had to tell him, I mean, you guys have made some great moves. Uh, you you got to give them credit. You know, the the, uh, the addition of A.J. Brown, that's huge, you know. And 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 and, and, um, and then you go and you add a Pro Bowl cornerback, you know. You, you've already got one Pro Bowl cornerback. You add two Pro Bowl cornerbacks. So I think that um, – what you're saying, I don't think that's out of the question. You do you agree they are a final four? I mean, you would think they would be a final four team, right? With the and, and this is why I say it, Gary. I want to put yeah. context behind it. Yeah, they got the 31st easiest schedule. Uh huh. They've added all these components, like you said, not yeah. so much rookie, but that's now right. you add James Bad, Bad, um, Bradbury. Brad, look, let right. me throw this at you too. Think about yeah. this. He's probably yeah. living in Jersey. So he's not going to have to pull his family out of school or what have you. That's right. Yep. He's going to be able to drive down 95, get a maybe an apartment close to the Nova Care Center. He yep. knows every player in the division. That's you right. got him for three million dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, what does a second cornerback now on the other side of Darius Slay do to the potential of what this defense might look like with Jonathan Gannon? I, I think I think it, does, it, it it really allows them see. Last year, they didn't play. I mean, they were afraid to play man-to-man -man for a long time during the season. They were playing zone all the time. Now they play the man-to-man. -man. They can they can, they can, uh, they can, really go after people, you know, uh, attacking them when you've got two Pro Bowl cornerbacks. I mean, it's, it's amazing, uh, you know, the jump they've made to where you go from, uh, you know, the kid they have over there, Steve Nelson. You know, he struggled. Now you add a, a guy like Bradbury. You add him with Darius Slay on the other side, another Pro Bowl cornerback over there. And, and this is a throwing league. So you add people in key positions. You add Pro Bowl level player. That's what you did offensively. You brought in A.J. Brown, a Pro Bowler. You didn't, you didn't bring in a kid. You draft. Somebody said, well, so that's why I was so shocked when I'm going like, how did they get him, man? What do you? What did they do to get him? And then and you know, Gary, you get this. Bradbury. Get this. They yeah. they didn't. I would have did this. I'd have traded him out of the conference, not, hoping he wouldn't land in the division. Without, without a doubt. And without what, a doubt. You couldn't get a seventh rounder for him? I know. Come on. Without a doubt, you want to trade him out. I mean, because he knows – the he knows the competition in this division. He knows these guys. So you you got a guy that you're able to make that move. I mean, that's extraordinary, very unusual to have that happen. And at those key positions, the thing is, though, we're going. I, I want to see how they're going to play together uh, from a standpoint that how how the uh, defensive coordinator is going to be able to take advantage of that. But 
it, it's a tremendous addition for them to be able to add that level of a player at a position which last year, come on, Steve Nelson, he wasn't not a big time starter, but to to add a Pro Bowl level cornerback. And and the thing about Bradbury is coming in here to play. He's in a position where he knows he wants to play well because he really wants to take advantage of uh, and and, uh, and really be out there on the market again uh, for the big bucks. I mean, that's what he wants to do. He's so investing he's got in the himself motivation to play well. He's investing in himself here with that one year eleven million. That's what he, that's here. what he's doing. That's what he's doing. And so he, you know, but he he knows this uh, division. He knows. Come on, when he plays against the Giants, come on, he's been playing against their receivers. He's already knows, you know, uh, the other receivers in the division. So it's going to be very interesting. I tell you, uh, they really have made extraordinary jump to go from where they at they were at, and you couldn't have added a better guy, you know, bringing in Bat Bradbury, and you know, and AJ Brown, and you add two Pro Bowl level players and Hassan Reddick. This is a throwing league. You you got you added people at positions that are. Very, very important to winning in the NFL now. They got a pass rusher in red. Yep. They got two corners. Those are key positions yep. if you're going to win. Do you think now the microscope, instead of turning to the roster, do you think now it's turned on to the coaches? Because Jonathan Gannon now has this. He's got a 6'1", 230-pound outside rushing edge rusher. How are yep. you going to utilize him? We said it last week, Gary. You're yep. not putting that guy in first and second down. You're putting them in situationally. That's You've right. got really good corners now. Now yep. you can play plus coverage. You're yep. not going to see guys rolling into the link with 97 uh, completion percentage. and guy's eating you apart now. How That's are right. you doing all this? Is now that emphasis on the coaching staff for them to step their game up? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, uh, they were in a situation where people expect, you know, them to do well. You know, they want to see an improvement. But now when you make those kind of additions – People saying, hey, look, you got playoff talent. I mean, you got guys that, you know, you got quality players. We're expecting something special. And, and without a doubt, uh, they are all on the line. I mean, you know, it, it, it's basically the, the coaching staff, Jalen Hurts, they're all on the line, man. We're going to find out because we got people. You got the kind of talent that you should win with. And, and what you said about the – Looking at the schedule, it's right there. They should have a big time year. Now you're talking about going to the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, again, when you add people like AJ Brown and Bradbury, you're adding guys who are capable of making plays when, when in big games when it's all on the line. So, yeah, you're expecting something special without a doubt because these are people that are capable of making plays. And having big games and playing a uh, dominating type football against the best people in the in the in the league. So uh I, I think that uh it's not out of the question. Whole thing is, you know, Nick, hey Nick, hey buddy, it's time oh, for yeah. you to step up. And the same thing with Gannon, you gotta step up, man, because you got the people, some of the best people. I was just um uh they had a um uh, a charity event, you know, um, for, for autism, the, the autism challenge. Yeah. And I was over there, you know, I'm riding the bike and everything. And I'm looking at, uh, you know, some of the kids they got me, you know, um, big, um, the big, big guard, uh, I'm trying to think of a kid from Alabama. Dickerson. Big Dickerson was over there, man. You see how big he is? Hey, dude, got they got, got some big folks. Him, who's even bigger. Dude, right? they got some large people on that. I floor. mean, that that line, that really, that left side of the line, you could say it's the best left side in the NFL. Agreed. Those guys playing next to each other, and then you got a Pro Bowl center. You know they can run the football. Well, now you, got, you added a Pro Bowl wide receiver. And he's a big dude. And he's a he's a big monster. He's a big guy, and he he overpowers people. So I tell you, it's it's going to be fun, man. I tell you what, and and the thing is, see, you're saying this now, but 
by the time we get near the season, there are going to be a lot of people playing, saying Super Bowl because of all these players they've added. And they added guys that are, have already been superstars in the NFL. You go and you add these guys. Uh, that's why I, I'm not saying <laughs> right now, but I expect a big year. I do expect Me too. to have I'm, a big year. I'm expecting a big year. Gary, I want to yeah. I want, I want ask you about the architect of the team now. Mm -hmm. um, there is no question, and you correct me if I'm wrong, you being over there at the autism event, I thought it was a great event. I saw all the pictures. Yeah. It was truly great. Um, Howie Roseman officially has all the power on this team and on this roster and in that coaching staff. There is nobody who has more power than him, and it's evident. Do you yep. have a problem with him having all the power and not having – a relationship like most GMs do. Kevin Colbert never, ever wanted to have more power than Mike Tomlin. He wanted to work with Mike Tomlin. Most uh -huh. GMs want – and I'm not saying how he doesn't want to work with Nick, but yeah. we know this. If Nick says something, he's got a politician to get Zach Pascal on the team. Other coaches say, I want this guy on the team, and the GM yeah. goes and gets him for him Yeah, because the GM – Wants to share that responsibility. Are you okay with Howie not sharing that responsibility with the head coach? You know, I tell you, I know a lot of people uh, put a lot of pressure on Howie. And, you know, hey, I was saying it too, like uh, going into the offseason. Come on, we didn't go get a, a top receiver, you know. Uh, you know, I thought you were going to try to add a cornerback, you know. Howie's done that and more this offseason. And really – the year how we had during the Super Bowl was a Hall of Fame year. All the people he added contributed to that Super Bowl team. Every guy, he had guys, they might not have played, but three more games the rest of their career. But they were great that year. I don't know what he had going, but doggone it, he was on time that year, man. Everybody they added, come on, they played against, uh, the, the, the Patriots at their top. Brady was playing at the top of his game. Doggone Bra Brady threw for 500 yards against them. Yeah, it was up and down the field, up and incredible. down the field. But the, but the Patriots couldn't stop the Eagles. They couldn't stop them. That no, they got beat game. up in the end, Gary. They got beat up. They got beat up. I mean, an and, and, and extraordinary year that Howie had because he added all the pieces and it was an extraordinary year for a GM. You know, he, he just added the – everything, everybody he touched turned to gold that year. So, maybe he can do it again. <laughs> you know, it, it, he, it, he's it, really made times. moves this year were better than the ones then. I mean, come on. The people he's added. He's, he's already had extraordinary run to add these kind of people. I don't know how you do it. But did he share that? Did he share that responsibility with Doug then in 17? Was there more of a working relationship with Doug and him? Because it just seems to me, Gary, this dynamic is completely different. Nick is the coach, but Nick is not really in charge of this thing here. Well, that's true. Yeah, uh, Howie's in charge. Of this. Wasn't there a better working dynamic? With Howie and Doug then in 17? Or what? maybe, I, I don't no, know, you I really, tell me. I, no, really, uh, hey. Okay. Howie was calling the shots then, too. Okay. He was calling the shots. I mean, you know, uh, I, I think if anything, that's one of the reasons Doug left. I mean, because Howie was the one calling the shots, really. I mean, and come on. Doug, they brought Doug in. Come on. Nobody thought Doug was going to get the job. They gave Doug the job, but Doug didn't have a lot of power. No, he did not have a lot of power. Uh, it was Howie that was calling the shots then. So the thing about it, everything Howie did that year was right. So I it's, mean, it's almost the right. same dynamic today as it was that year. Yeah, it was the same. It was the same dynamic. He had a young coach who uh, a lot of people thought had gotten the job before he should have. It was the same way. That's what they did. I mean, it, Howie was running and Howie was calling all the shots. How he went out and got all of the different people that he brought in and got, you know, Doug made it work. You know, he made it work and uh, they just went on an extraordinary run. But to go over there and beat 
Brady and uh, Belichick and them at the height of their game. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, they didn't have a bet. Brady was extraordinary, but the Eagles still beat them. Beat them up, too, there. Let me now, ask you this here. Doug, Doug Peterson, what are you expecting this year? There was some good news for Doug today. Travis Entienne looks like he's going to play. Um, he got off that um, that injury on the foot. He's going to be cleared for OTAs. He's going to be ready to go for training camp. So they get a first-rounder back they didn't have a year ago. His teammate, um, Trevor Lawrence's teammate at Clemson. They've got some pieces there. Yeah. What are you expecting to see with Doug um, over these next couple of years in Jacksonville? Well, you know, the thing is, um, he uh, is a real good – he's really good with the quarterbacks. You know, uh, that's the thing that um, – I think the, the number one reason they brought him down there is uh, he is good with the, from a personality standpoint, uh, from what he's going to allow the guy to do. He's a confidence builder. He will let these guys encourage them to shine. So I think he's going to be great, you know, uh, especially with the young quarterback, with all the skills that, uh, you know, Lawrence has. So I expect them to do pretty well. You know, I, I don't know how much they're going to win. And, you know, I haven't looked at their schedule. That's a, you know, I, you know, over there in that AFC is tough. Oh, yeah. over there. <laughs> but I expect them to have a good year. And I expect Trevor Lawrence, I expect to see growth in him uh, as, um, you know, he as, as Doug Peterson works with him. Because what he's going to do is he's going to instill confidence. He's going to believe in him. Uh, and and that, that part of the game, he's really good because – he did that with the Eagles quarterbacks then. I mean, he was really good with Nick Foles, a guy that was on the bench. Hey, we believe in you. You know, he lets the guy know he believes in him. And then when he's communicating with him in the game, you know, with the plays, he's going to let that guy do what he does best. That's way he's. That's the way he is. He's going to let him do what he does best. And if he really likes something, he's going to go with it. And he's going to let the let the kid shine. Two last questions for you. Yeah. Chief Cobb, I'll ask you a personal question here. Mm -hmm. If you had to play for two coaches, one of the two coaches, who would you want to play for, Andy Reid or Doug Peterson? Well, man, that's – that's. Uh, let me think about that. You know – You personally, who would you want to play for? Well, I tell you, I really liked Andy, man. I, you know, I I, uh, I, I thought Andy was, uh, was probably better when it came to um, – the way he designed the game, the the game plan, I, I don't think that there's anybody better that can de design a game plan better than Andy. I, so I would probably say Andy because I saw the consistency. I mean, come on, Andy won and won and won and won and won. Now, they didn't win the Super Bowl. They came short so many times. But doggone it, every year he had a game plan and everything set up to win. Did Andy fight for his players? Did Andy fight for his players like Doug did? Yeah, he would. He would. He would fight for his players. That's right. You, if you um, you were one of his guys, you out there battling for him, he would fight for you. And he would stay there with you uh, year after year. And I saw him do that, uh, you know, with with, uh, with Donovan and all those guys. He, 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 he stood up for his players. Yes, he did. So I would say Andy because he, he did it so long. I, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen anybody very rarely in the league. You only see a few times where guys win as much as he did because look at the way he went. The Eagles dominated the NFC while they were there. Now they were at they were in the NFC Championship game again and again. He goes to KC. They've done the same thing, dominated year after year. So I have to say, Andy. I said this. I came out with my final question for you here. I came out with my thirty-two top NFL coaches going into the 2022 season. And again, this is not resume stuff. I've yeah. got Sirianni at 16 and I've got Andy Reed, the number one coach in the NFL. Do you believe right now he is the number one coach in the NFL when it comes to one guy that you'd want to have coaching your team for 60 minutes of football. If you had to win a game um, with the personnel that they have right now on their football team and with all the things going into this season, this year, not talking about Belichick's resume, there it's hard to it's hard to debate that resume, and I won't yeah. debate it because you sound like an idiot if you do debate it. But yeah. I'm saying for this year, is there any other coach that you'd want to have with their football team going into a 60 minute game to try to win it than other than Andy Reid? No, 
I would put Andy as the the number one guy, man. He he's gonna have them ready to win. I think he's gonna have them ready to win. I've seen him do it year in year out, and he's done it in two franchises where they've been the dominant team in their their uh, conference. And you know he did it for years with the Eagles. He's gone to to Kansas City and done the same thing over there. So I don't think you could say it's an accident. I, I agree with you. I think he's the best coach. Yeah. In the sport right now. Gary, I appreciate it, my friend. All righty. I tell you that, what, you're talking Super Bowl. I said Super Bowl. I know. I'm on I'm, I I know. I know. I'm on I'm into firing. I'm in the bullseye right now. Yeah. G Cub, I appreciate it, my friend. Uh, hey, how's it going? I got you, man. I threw myself in that mix there, didn't I? <laughs> hey. Hey, man. I get it. But that's interesting. I didn't realize that. That's a great education that Gary gave me. And some of you guys have been trying to tell me here. Okay. 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 You heard him say it. You were first. Everyone's going to be saying it. I'm telling you, I got the Eagles winning the NFC. 